I'm Michael Armbrust, and uh, I joined Databricks about four years ago, and that was actually the first time I worked on Spark. And when I came here, the high-level idea of Spark SQL and data frames and data sets is when you look at the original APIs in Spark, RDDs, that's really like the assembly language for programming. It gives you lots of fine-grained control, but it's a level that most programmers don't care about. Spark SQL give you, gives you these high-level abstractions that let you say declaratively what you want to compute without saying how it needs to be done. And that gives Spark the freedom to figure out the most efficient way to run that computation automatically. It can perform tricks like automatically compiling efficient bytecode or re-encoding your data in efficient binary format. And what that lets you do is focus kind of only on the computation that you want to be done and let Spark figure out how to make it as fast as possible. So Spark SQL is pretty much used for everything that people do with Spark today. Everything from doing ad hoc analysis to statistics to machine learning to even kind of more traditional things like ETL where I just need to take data from one system and transform it and move it into another. So I think the biggest difference with Spark SQL is the ecosystem around Spark. If you look at a traditional RDBMS, what you're going to find is in order to even get started, you have to take all of your data and put it into that black box. With Spark, you really have the entire ecosystem around the project. So that's both being able to choose what language you want to express your computation in, whether it's Scala, Java, Python, or R, but it's also where you want the data to be stored. So we have connectors for every system, from Microsoft SQL Data Warehouse, to Parquet stored on S3, to Redshift, to Avro. And what that means is when you're using Spark, you can have one tool that can work with all of these different things kind of independent of what you're trying to accomplish. There's a lot of cool stuff going on with Spark SQL right now. So one area is streaming. We're spending a lot of time on making it possible to not only ask a question once, but to have Spark continually answer that question as data changes and as new data arrives. Other areas I see a lot of cool work going on is in the APIs in Spark. So we're doing a lot of work on making Python support better, and we're also making it possible to plug in new data sources while still, still taking advantage of rich optimizations, like pushing down limits and filters and aggregations.